Well, the doctor know. I will wake him after the sometimes. But well, welcome everyone. And thank you very much for inviting me to talk about transparency and privacy. Because it's a talk that I like so much. And I am working with that for a long, long, long time. Well, I am Edison Osorio. What who is this guy? Welcome to you today. Well, I am a computer, computer scientist and I am information security specialist. I work with that for more than 15 years. And I have a corporation in copyright in my school. And I am I'm CEO and founder of Original Mind. Original Mind was founded in 2015 in Brazil. And at, at first, we were preserving intellectual properties. After that, we moved to the platform for a e-governance platform using blockchain. And we use blockchain for authenticating identities, signatures, authorizations, and all, and digital content. Well, I'm a member of ISO. Uh, I represent Brazil and lead in Brazil of security, privacy, and identity with you. I'm a member of new, new blockchain software platform. And this kind of thing happened in Brazil. I was very proud to talk to the event with this guy on a, a very important event over there. Well, let's talk about trans transparency versus privacy and the conflict between them. What happens? Uh, is it that? Is the privacy that what it is? Probably. Pro probably it is. Probably it's not. Because privacy is directly related to information security. We can say if privacy is dead, information security is dead as also. And well, some people are studying privacy in four different levels. On individual level, corporate level, organizations, state level, and international level. And, uh, and well, where are people concerned about my privacy? This graph, this graph can show to us people in Americas, Europe, Asia, and Africa. There are some places people are more concerned about my privacy. Okay? Probably online privacy is the key for changing the mind of people because they understand better how their privacy is being invaded sometimes. And we have problems to see, but Greeks is on top of this list uh, where people are more concerned. And in America, what they, what they are concerned, what they worry about online privacy, online banking. It's very easy to understand because why they are concerned about privacy on online banking. Because there's a lot of frauds, there's a lot of leakings all the time. And uh, we have online shopping. And something like stealing identities, identity fraud. That's, that's where the privacy is most important, probably. So people feel that better on those fields. And uh, uh, this lady was the whistleblower of Cambridge Analytica. Probably a lot of you heard something about it. And she says something interesting. She says, privacy doesn't exist on a post Facebook crisis era. And she suggests that we could sell our private data. Because selling will not be so concerned about what they do with our data, but we sold that. Is it fair? Maybe. Uh, we have a, a new kind of capitalism. We have a surveillance capitalism. They are getting all of our data. They are extracting. They are creating commodities with our data, and they are selling. And the important thing. They are exiling people from their own behavior. They are creating clusters and bubbles. Bubbles of knowledge, bubbles of thinking, ways of thinking. And they are creating new markets on behavior, or prediction, and modification of behavior. 
using all the information they are taking from us. Well, we are in the age of privacy movies. Why? Because we, we know it's impossible to solve. They are taking our data for many years, even before Facebook, even before Google. But now we understand better because they are leaking our data. So privacy, we are very concerned about privacy because of those big guys. And, well, they are collecting, selling, reusing our personal data for a long time. And is it too late to stop that? What do you do? No, no, for sure. We, we need to find the ways. The ways are there. We just need to use them. We need to make people aware of the ways for protecting their privacy and their own data. It's very important. And people just don't know how to do it. And the door to hell is they think what they are doing up with our data because they are doing more and more and more and collecting more data and transforming the data they got in new data to sell that to people, advertisers, and use that to us. But I have nothing to hide. Some people say that. Some friends of you know that. It's wrong. It's very wrong. I had a lot to hide. That's why I wear clothes. I have nothing to hide. Why am I wearing Well, this guy has a very interesting quote about that. I mean that you don't care about the right to privacy because you have nothing to hide. It's actually the same than saying you don't care about your speech because you have nothing to say. Uh, and what do you do to protect your privacy? Cryptography. Cryptography is the best way for protecting your privacy today. You can encrypt your connections, you can encrypt your data, you can encrypt a lot of things. But there are things that you can, can encrypt yet. For example, your mobile phone. They have the GPS turned on all the time. They get information about where we are all the time. How to block that? Stop using our mobile phone. The, the last version, the last update of iOS was good because it sounds good. iOS 1, sorry. <laughs> maybe. Maybe maybe it's good. But they have a new feature. So any app requests for your location when the app is closed, they notify you and you authorize or not. I think it's a big step for having that control of our uh, protecting you from that kind of stealing your data where you are all the time. And I, I brought two cases of big problem in France. Are you aware about the, the new big case? They installed some cameras in the streets and they are scanning the faces of every citizen who is walking over there. And some guy tried to not appear in the camera. He was fined because he protested against it. And in China, what's happening in China with the, with the social score? We, we need to bring that discussion to everyone. Is it fair? Is it not fair the government having this kind of information? and taking decisions of if you can take the bus or the train or having a line of credit, is it fair? GDPR, everyone knows about GDPR. But if you ask for your government to remove your access of data, will do it? Probably not. And governments are under GDPR, not over. And they have access of data. Use the data. Data that could be deleted. But they still using that data or storing that data in ways we don't know. And that's why we talk about transparency. Because 
when we talk about rights, international laws for rights, they are international, global. But when we talk about transparency, probably we are talking to our governments, regulators, it's local. And transparency is very important to understand how they are handling our data. Uh, this map shows transparent government practices. Uh, the darker countries, they are more transparent. Okay, the lighter, they are less transparent. And the next one is corruption perception index. Uh, from zero, uh, zero is, is dark, and uh, the one hundred percent is blue. So less corrupt countries, they are blue. But look this map. Look at this map again. Again, again, the overlapping. So we have the perception, the real perception. Less transparency brings more corruption to our our governments. Make, it makes a lot of sense. Well, privacy and transparency do not balance each other, but complement each other. And they complement. Why they complement each other? What we use to, to have metrics on uh, how extent the, the, the transparency or how to extend the, the, the about the privacy. We use public interest. Because it's public interest in really drive how much transparency you have and how much privacy you will have. The public interest must drive that information. And one, well, transparency protects privacy. Transparent privacy policies, we can have transparency reports. We can follow higher industrial standards around the world, and the most important thing, it could be through self-regulation self and co-regulation. If we have the government, we, the, the government needs to talk to the market, to the people, to understand how to co-create the regulation. We know governments, they, they, they have a very heavy hand creating regulations because they do for their minds. And they, their minds are from centuries ago. We need to keep that, we need to work together. And transparency on international level, the import, importance of rights, we need to improve uh, the knowledge of digital things on our people. We need to reduce the digital divide by increasing the affordability. We need to promote democracy. We need to promote digital transparency. Transparency is fundamental to protect people's rights. We can for personal data are collected, used, consulted, or processed. To what extent the personal data is processed? To what extent your personal data will be processed? And transparency is fundamental to improve democracy. I brought in a case. Built in Brazil, they use our, our engine for identity signatures and uh, authentication of documents for collecting signatures on public petitions. In Brazil, we have a law if 1% of the population agrees on a public petition, the Congress or the House of Representatives must hear. It's very important. And the thing is, after this project, for the first time, the Brazilian government has approved two laws that start from people. And because they could prove the identity of people signing that public petition and it could not be fraud, the laws were approved. It's a big step in a government and everything can be auditable because it was just public petitions. And uh, because of that, they won the, uh, won the Global Impact Challenge at Google.org. And transparency is fundamental to promote access to justice. One other example. We created a tool for collecting, for preserving evidence of harassment, fake news dissemination, defamation, and cyberbullying. Brazil, for doing that, we need to go sometimes to the notary. The notaries don't work with this, don't work with the And because of that, 
a lot of people are having access to justice because they can prove that bad thing was on the planet sometime. And last year, a presidential candidate, we had the elections, presidential elections last year in Brazil, and a candidate, a presidential candidate, used that tool for preserving the government proposals because other parties, they fake it, they fraud the government proposal and disseminate it on the WhatsApp, Telegram, and social media. So, with that kind of tool, they can prove what is authentic, what is not. And we had a very important decision for us in the Court of Appeals when the judge uh, he, so, he told this kind of thing, decision. Uh, from the knowledge of the facts, the author provided, uh, provided the preservation of all the content via blockchain to original my platform, able to prove the veracity and existence of the contents. And transparency is fundamental to protection of privacy. We created the, uh, the, uh, the first protocol for secret voting on public blockchains. And uh, we had the proof of concept to run, the white paper already published one some time ago. And that's why we were listed by UN as a real blockchain use case to be social impact. And we had the recognition uh, from the uh, European Commission as a trusted blockchain application. Well, and we use blockchain for transparency because we can improve the democracy. We can empower, we can empower people and we are promoting the access to justice for us all. Thank you.